Hey friends, it's Saturday and I'm live on Facebook. Friends, if you're out there, join me for this discussion. We're gonna talk immigration today. Um, I found a little corner in my home to do this video. And so I'm hoping, I'm praying that my dogs will behave themselves and um, not bark <laughs> during the filming of this video. Friends, if you're out there watching, give me some hearts, some thumbs up, and tell me uh, where you're watching me from. Uh, as you know, my name is Latoya McBain Pompey, and I'm an immigration lawyer here in New York. But we work with people all over the world, really. And um, in my day job, I help people through my, my law office, McBean Law. Uh, but um, my uh, other hustle, so to speak, is uh, Smart Immigration Academy, which is launching in uh, four days. It's launching on January 1st, on New Year's Day. Uh, last day to enroll, friends, is on Tuesday, okay? Tuesday um, by midnight. You must register by Tuesday, okay? Midnight, December 31st, in order to lock in our low introductory rate of $14.99. So if you're out there watching, uh, welcome. Give me some hearts and some likes, and let's talk immigration. Friends, in this video, I'm going to talk about something that comes up very frequently, um, with spousal petitions, okay? Spousal petitions, but there's also a stepchild petition that's also pending. And so the issue is, what if you, the spouse, you're denied for either adjustment of status or um, if you're at the embassy level and they denied your visa application, why? simply because they don't believe that you guys submitted enough evidence to prove that the marriage is bona fide and that there's a lot to that right it's not just about oh you didn't submit all the paperwork there's a lot more to it than that so if you're denied the question is well what happens to your child's petition right because your spouse who is the stepdad or the stepmom may have also petitioned for your child, right? And so the question is, well, what happens to that child's petition if you are denied on the basis of you just didn't submit enough evidence to prove bona fide marriage? So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. We're going to break this down. And friends, I want you to share this video with uh, those in your feed, share it with other people because you never know who is going through what and they need this information, okay? So if you have friends and families overseas, globally, wherever you are, share this video right now and then give me some hearts and some thumbs up so that I know that you're there and that you wanna talk immigration with me. And if you could hear me well, also give me, I need someone to give me a heart or a thumbs up so that I know that I should keep going and you could hear me okay, all right? So that's the first thing that we're gonna talk about, what will happen to the child's petition if you are denied for adjustment of status or if your visa application is denied. And then secondly, I'm going to answer several questions. Thank you for that heart. I'm not sure who it came from, but I so appreciate it and the likes. Thank you so much. Um, the second thing that we're going to talk about is your questions. I've been getting questions about Smart Immigration Academy, so I'm going to address your questions as well. Friends, I'm super excited about that. The link is in uh, below here in this video. So sign up today for Smart Immigration Academy because during the academy, during your time with us in the academy, okay, which is a monthly membership program, you're going to be getting me like this every week live, and so um, it's going to be a terrific, terrific journey together. So now, um, also, friends, I do have a Smart Immigration Academy Facebook page. I want you to go ahead and like it. It's brand new. I published it just a few days ago. Um, so thank you though, for those of you who have already started to like that page. That's a great way to stay plugged into the Academy. Um, we're going to have a private members only group, however, in Smart Immigration Academy in which those members will get me like this each week. So. Um, Stay tuned for more details about that. Now, let's talk immigration, guys. Now, 
So, and actually I had a case like this. I had a case like this not too long ago and thank God we were able to work with her and eventually she was able to get her green card. We had to refile, um, but she got her green card and she's super happy now. So the question is, it, your partner, your spouse, your U.S. citizen spouse perhaps filed for you and um, you're here in the U.S. So let's take scenario number one. You're here in the U.S and um, your U.S. citizen spouse petitioned for you. You guys go on your interviews, your green card interviews, and I say interviews, not interview, because things didn't go so well during the first interview. So they call you guys back in for interview number two, right, the Stokes interview, and things didn't go well at that interview either, okay? Why, why not? Well, it didn't go well maybe because um, Maybe because the marriage wasn't real. Let's be frank here. Maybe because there was really no genuine marriage, right? Um, and immigration sees cases like this every day, okay? Fraud is a very big problem with immigration petitions, particularly the marriage petitions. So let's say the relationship wasn't genuine. Or let's also say that, well, what if it was genuine, but things came up, your answers were maybe inconsistent and immigration officer didn't believe that you guys had a bona fide marriage because your responses were so off during the interview. So then what happens in a situation like that? They will deny you. So you get denied for adjustment of status, which is a big, big, deal in America now, okay? Big problem because that can land you in immigration court in removal because that is the new policy that the government has, okay? So anyway, let's keep going with this scenario. You're denied, but you say to yourself, well, what happens to my, what's going to happen to my daughter's petition? She's under 21. She's, let's say she's 18 um, or 19 uh, and your partner, your spouse petitioned for your, your child as well. And that I-130 family petition was pending. What's going to happen to that petition? Well, what's going to happen with that petition is the government will also deny your child's petition. Why? Because the step-parent, step-child relationship doesn't exist. And you may be saying, well, of course it exists. We have a marriage certificate that we, you know, we, we've been married for the past several years or however long it's been, a few years or however long it's been. And we got married when our, my daughter was under 18. And so we did, it, did, it did form that step-parent, step-child relationship. You might be saying, of course, that's her stepdad. Why would the government deny her? Um, because they denied me. The reason for that is, for immigration purposes, okay, that step parent stepchild relationship is formed. Yes, when that child, if the marriage occurred when the child was under 18, thank you again for that like. Thank you so much. But the issue is it's only formed, right? And I, I want to look right here. The relationship was created through that marriage. Yes, that step parent stepchild relationship was created through the marriage. But for immigration purposes, it was created through a bona fide marriage, okay? So that whole bona fide issue is also linked to your child's petition, not just yours. So the government will deny that stepchild's petition because they didn't think that marriage is bona fide. And so therefore that relationship, that step-parent, step-child relationship not formed, didn't happen. And so... That's the situation that um, people face, right? They're denied, and then their stepchild's, uh, then their child's petition is also denied. So um, now, what next? What next? If you're out there, it's Saturday, I know, and everyone should be doing something fun or something, you know, you clean in the house or you're doing something on Saturday. But I, watch this video because it's really important. I'm going to talk talk about some more important stuff here. Let's talk immigration, right? And I'm going to answer questions about Smart Immigration Academy, which I do want you guys to enroll in, even right now during the video. Enroll. The link is in this, um, in the video, in the description. Guys, enroll, because I'm going to be talking about stuff like this 
during um, in Smart Immigration Academy. Okay, so let's keep going. Now, what the, will the parent need to do in this kind of situation or scenario? The parent will need to refile for adjustment of status if he or she is here in America and the marriage is still intact. And it in fact is a good, bona fide, genuine marriage. They should simply refile, okay? They need to refile. But um, be careful with the age of the child now, the stepchild. You've got to be careful with that because, um, you know, that, that, that scenario may look a little differently if the child goes over 21. The child will have to wait longer, right? Because then that child is bumped down into a family petition, family preference category and no longer immediate relative. So be careful with respect to the age of the child. Watch that very carefully, right? Now, if the parent is overseas and the child is overseas and they were denied by the embassy, and what happens on the embassy level, friends, is the embassy will can say to USCIS, to, to you, actually, the embassy can say, we're going to, we deny this visa application because we don't believe the marriage, uh, there's enough evidence to prove bona fide marriage. And furthermore, we're going to re uh, recommend that that I-130 that was approved back at USCIS in the United States, we're going to recommend that that I-130 be revoked. Revoked. And so they send your file back to USCIS. Hi, Naomi. Um, truly appreciate all the information you share. Thanks for saying that. Appreciate that. Thank you for your comment. Um, friends, if you're out there, please comment. So the government the, on the embassy level, they'll send that file back to USCIS and say to USCIS, we're recommending that you revoke that I-130. And USCIS will say, well, we're not going to act on that right away simply because you uh, embassy say that we need to revoke this because we we reviewed the file in the beginning in the uh, you know in the first place and we thought it was good we thought it was you know we approved it okay so what you what USCIS will then say is we're gonna they're gonna send you a letter saying listen the embassy has told us that we need to revoke the I-130 and before we act on that we want to give you 30 days to respond to this. Give us, give, we're giving you 30 days to submit your response to this and your response need to provide more evidence to show that bona fide marriage exists, right? And so you put together that nice little packet and you file that response. Um, and if USCIS agrees with you and say, yeah, we knew we were right to begin with and we agree with you. It is, we find bona fide relationship or bona fide marriage here. They're then going to kick it back to the embassy and then you'll get another opportunity for an interview. So that's how it could happen in the positive, um, positive outcome. Okay. So, um, but if the marriage Friends, if the, so you and the child will have another opportunity, obviously. But if the marriage fell apart during all of this, during, well, not during all of this, but if the marriage fell apart and you don't want to refile for adjustment of status or you don't think that you have a very good chance at the embassy level again, then you're going to need to find another pathway because then, you know, that's it. It's, you know, you, you're, you decide you're not, you, you no longer have that petitioner, right? If particularly if you guys get a divorce, obviously petitioner is gone, right? So to summarize what we just talked about, right? If you're a spouse, your, your spouse petitioned for you for, for a green card and you file for adjustment of status because you're here in the United States and the government <clears throat> denies you, um, denies you on the basis of, lack of evidence regarding bona fide to prove bona fide marriage then the stepchild's i-130 petition will likewise be denied because the relationship that formed the step parent stepchild relationship is not bona fide and so that's what would happen in a such scenario like that i hope that was helpful to you <clears throat> uh hi shauna k good to see you good afternoon Okay, so um, friends, uh, if you have
questions uh, regarding this topic that I just talked about, feel free to comment below and include your questions. I'd love to read them after this session. Now let's shift to Smart Immigration Academy, which I'm super excited about. People are registering, they're gearing up to be part of this introductory um, academy. Really, it's an, it, this is a, it, friends, it's only $14.99 a month. This is an introductory offer. Okay, believe me, as we develop and I open it up for enrollment a second time, it will be much higher than that, okay? So now is the time to lock in $14.99 and join our academy so that we can interact with each other like this um, and interact it, uh, with obviously me answering questions uh, live each week before you and covering topics that um, you guys are facing as you go along in your immigration process. Yes, we're going to be doing a lot of family-based petition discussions, particularly marriage um, petitions, based petitions we're gonna talk a lot about. We're gonna talk a lot about public charge and how to fight an attack um, uh, uh, in that area, okay? Because that's a huge area that's just really shifting things in the world of immigration. We are um, gonna talk a whole lot about those two topics, those two areas in particular, we're also going to talk about U.S. citizenship and some challenges that people face in getting citizenship as well and how to overcome those challenges. So Smart Immigration Academy is going to be chock full of good information that uh, you'll get each week, okay? And also, <clears throat> you're going to have access to templates that I've written, documents that I've written that you can review and use in your own case, okay? Every case is different, obviously, but it, templates are available so that you could at least see, right, what this should look like, sound like, what type of information should I be included in, included in this document, right? And so you'll have access to that library um, it's just, just a whole lot of stuff. I'm going to get into it shortly, but I want to cover your questions before uh, we move on. So the first question that I received was, will I cover green card adjustment of status and the process to citizenship? And of course, the answer is yes. I just mentioned that we're going to talk about uh, those areas. We're going to be deep into adjustment of status. We're going to talk a lot about consular processing as well, because that consular Consular processing has heated up. There's a lot of stuff going on, a whole lot. And so lots to talk about with respect to the embassy level and how to succeed when you go in on your interview uh, for that immigrant visas, particularly since public charge is uh, a major, major challenge that people are faced with these days. Second question is, I love your videos. But, here's the but, guys. But he, he, he was very polite about it, and I so appreciated that. He said, but Facebook, um, Messenger, uh, and WhatsApp, they're not safe from the government. They all are being monitored. So what this individual is saying is that the Smart Immigration Academy environment that I've created, it is a private and secure environment, and a lot of the interactions that we're going to have will be um, through a, my private Facebook group, okay? Um, but also there is a membership site that those who have registered, you have access to a new site. It's on my web, a new website. It's a membership site and that is very secure okay and so um, in order to have access to that of course you need to be a member you need to be paying the fee each month um, we monitor things on our end to see okay are, is there any unusual activities going on on this membership site in terms of uh, emails that are you know um, registrants like who you know who are these people so there are some security things that we're learning about as we go along and do this as well to ensure that the membership site is very secure and only those who have um, who are paying members will have access to it now the question is with regard to like you know you know you guys know that the government is you know, has a new policy of uh, social media policy in which they want to know your social media names and all of that because they are monitoring. And so, but 
the way that um, I and other people uh, talk about this issue is that, you know, make your Facebook or whatever, make it more secure. Figure out how to tighten up your privacy settings, adjust your privacy settings so that only your friends um, can view your stuff, right? There's ways of making Facebook very secure. And in order for the government to go cross that door, so to speak, and get across and get into your data, they're gonna need a warrant. They're gonna need to explain to a judge, you know, here's the reason why we need to get access to this. And they're gonna need Facebook's permission as well. So, you know, there are certain boundaries that are in place that Facebook has set up to make its platform more secure. But I also want you guys to know that my membership site is also very secure and we're putting in place some security measures as well to ensure that obviously only our members uh, will have access to it and we will be monitoring it to make sure that these are individuals who, um, who we verify are real people, <laughs> real people who are seeking real help and knowledge from our academy. Okay, uh, third question is, it's, it's a monthly fee, right? It's not like a one-time fee. And so the answer is yes. In my video yesterday, I think I made a mistake early on in the video and I said, oh, it's $14.99, but I did not say $14.99 per month. So I think that's where this question came from. But yes, it is a monthly membership of $14.99 and it's a low introductory rate. It will go up uh, when I offer this again. Not sure when I'm going to open up enrollment. I really wanna focus on um, getting to know you guys and focus on making sure we're creating a product that you really find valuable and that's really helping you. So I'm gonna focus a lot of time and energy into ensuring that um, our members are getting what they really need. So not sure when I'm going to open it up for enrollments, which is why I think it is really critical that you guys get in now and lock in this low rate because everyone else will be paying more in the future. <clears throat> okay. Next question is, if I subscribe now at $14.99 a month, Will I have to pay $150 again for another registration? Answer is no, you're locking in this one-time rate. Next time around, not sure when that will be, but next time around we will also have, um, we'll have maybe do something like, you know, here's what the monthly fee is. However, if you'd like to pay annually one time, uh, you can. I'm almost certain that's how I'm gonna structure it next time around for those who are enrolling at a higher rate, okay? But for now, for this first um, uh, group, it's just $14.99 flat a month, and there is no, there really is no catch to it, okay? There really isn't. Yes, there will be, if you'd like to purchase a course that is relevant to your process or whatever it is you're going through and you'd like to purchase that, yes, you're gonna, that's, that's a different fee you'll have to pay like other people. Um, however, as a member of Smart Immigration Academy, you're only, you're gonna be getting a discount on those future courses. So I think uh, this is a really good deal. Next question is, I'm interested in joining the Academy, but I don't have a bank account or credit card. What can I do? Now, friends, as you know, if you click on the link below, um, it will take you to the sign up page in which you will need to put in a credit card. So credit card is the primary way that we're accepting payments. Thank you for that thumbs up. I see it. I appreciate it. Um, so credit card payments is obviously the primary way that we're um, accepting payments uh, at this point. But if you'd like to register and you don't have a credit card or a bank account, you can send in a money order. You can mail us a money order um, and ensure that that money order covers whatever period of time you want to be enrolled, whether it's six months or a year, and we will go ahead and enroll you. And you'll get emails confirming your enrollment and such, and you'll be a member. However, you've got in order to get it at this $14.99 rate, you've got to get us, get it in by the deadline. And that's um, December 31st, uh, uh, December 11.59, right? Um, what is that, Eastern time? No, I think I'm gonna do Pacific time this time around, but you've got to get it in um, on this, by December 31st, okay? And so 
that's what I would say to you. You've got to mail it in, and the address is on our website. Again, if you click on the link, uh, you'll and scroll all the way down. You will see more information about how to contact us um, on that site. Okay, and if you have any problems, you could always email us at mcbeanu at gmail.com. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, well, actually, this other question is related. It says, I use bitcoins. Um, so same thing. If you use bitcoins, you're going to also need to send us a money order uh, by the deadline in order to lock in this $14.99 a month rate. Okay. Um, Next question is, how can I make an appointment to meet with you one-on-one? -on -one? And so that's easy. That's, uh, you can contact the law office, my law office, and speak with one of, our, one of my assistants and schedule your consultation with me. Or you could go to mcbeanlaw.com and schedule, book your consultation on your own. And uh, after you make your payment, my calendar will open up and you select the day and time, and then we make it happen. I do meet with people uh, via video, um, <clears throat> also in a secure room, not through Facebook, uh, but through a secure video conferencing setup that we have. So I, I meet with people that way, or in person, or over the telephone. So our phone number is 718-301-9732. So that's how you can meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. And just so you know, when you meet with me one-on-one, -on -one, there's an attorney-client privilege relationship that's created at that point, okay, during our meeting. It's a limited relationship for the consultation. And I will be acting and re, uh, acting um, really on your behalf as your lawyer during that meeting. And that's a different type of setup from Smart Immigration Academy, which there's, that's through another company that I have. And um, it's for, it's an educational platform. No attorney client privilege uh, relationship is created that way. So that's how you can meet with me one-on-one -on -one, um, to talk about your immigration case. So with that being said, friends, uh, that's all that I'm going to share on this Saturday uh, afternoon. I will be coming back to you live tomorrow to talk about another issue, um, talk about another issue in immigration. There are so many issues to talk about. And also to answer any further questions that you guys may have about Smart Immigration Academy. And I see for Cheryl on this, you're joining, yay! So um, I went to law school actually with for Cheryl and I'm so delighted to see you in my feed and to see you on this, um, in this forum. And I cannot wait to have you in Smart Immigration Academy. And a real uh, shout out to her actually, she does criminal defense work in the Texas area. Okay, so uh, friends, uh, good referral, okay? Great attorney right there. Okay, so friends, um, I have to get back to my life now, <laughs> the rest of my life, and you do as well. Thank you so much for spending this Saturday, this moment with me today. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Please sign up enroll today for Smart Immigration Academy. I'm so excited to have you in this forum with me. It's gonna be amazing. Listen, 2020 is within a matter, it's in like three or four days. 2020 is right around the corner. We've gotta do things differently. We've gotta think differently. We've gotta act differently. We've got to um, pray more, be more, become more, do more because Things are so serious now, okay? We cannot operate like what we did this past in this past decade. We have, um, we're facing some very serious issues in the White House, okay? And this is not a political forum. I'm not gonna talk about those issues, but I just want you guys to know that with 2020 right around the corner, you need resources like Smart Immigration Academy to pull yourself through this immigration process. So that's what we're here for. And it's gonna be a tremendous, tremendous year. So I can't wait to have you in the Academy. With that being said, friends, have a great, great, great evening and um, be in peace. Thanks very much, bye-bye.